Hey, nerdy sports fan here, and we're talking week nine NFL action, which means our first ever power ranking is hitting the nerdy sports fan weekly. Check that out. Um, let's dig into the game here. We have Washington racist team names traveling to Buffalo to take on my recently uh, defeated Buffalo Bills. Um, so this is a no brainer. Okay, uh, we have likely the worst team in the NFL going up against a top 15 team on anybody's power ranking. So this is definitely Buffalo's game. They just have to not screw it up. So coming off of a loss against a quality team, I don't expect this to be a trap game. I don't. I don't think that Buffalo is going to mess around. Um, they have the right coaching staff to keep that sort of thing from happening anyway. And they got a bitter taste in their mouth from that loss that they suffered against Philadelphia. So I would anticipate them to take their frustrations out on Washington. And Washington just does not have the talent to deal with that. This is a very slim pickings kind of roster, uh, starting with the quarterback. They yeah who's playing quarterback in washington yeah who's their coach the average person doesn't know the answers to these questions um it's because it doesn't matter okay the um the roster is terrible it doesn't matter who's coaching them it doesn't matter who's throwing the ball they would lose regardless um the bad offensive line got a little bit better with their all pro offensive tackle finally ending his holdout. He only did that so he can accrue another year on his contract, okay? The man wants out, and he's going to get out. He does not like the way that the training staff has handled his injuries in the past. They're trying to shift blame to him. It doesn't matter if it is his fault. You don't do that if you want to keep your star players. You have to stroke the man's ego now and again in order to keep him happy. So obviously Washington has no interest in actually retaining their talent. I don't know. Maybe it's an ego thing. Maybe it's just plain stupid. And I'm leaning towards the latter because, well, Washington has given us no reason to think that they're going to be run well. Ever since Dan Snyder bought the team, I don't care how frequently I say it, that man is the worst owner in sports. So... I'm sorry, Washington fans, until he sells the team, you're not going to be relevant. Now, in this game, the Bills' defense is nasty, okay? They got a black eye last week from Philadelphia, largely based off of their offense not being able to sustain things and keep pace with Philly's offense. Not because their defense is bad. They just kept on getting hammered with the running game all game long and a couple of good, solid runs from Howard and Sanders slipped through the cracks. So I don't anticipate Washington to be able to sustain an attack like that. They won't be able to. Their defense cannot hold an opposing team in the way Phillies was able to hold Buffalo. So they can't sustain that kind of attack. At all. Adrian Peterson is fantastic. But he's got another ageless wonder in Frank Gore on the other side. They do very, very similar things with their game. If you're looking at them statistically, um, it's so close it's nuts. Frank Gore and Adrian Peterson are putting to bed the debate that talented running backs don't last past their 30s. They definitely do. Um, it's just cheaper to deal with the young guys. That's it. And with older running backs like these pair, um, who have realized that they no longer command the salary they once did, they're staying in the league, they're being very productive. So I like to see this. Um, I would expect neither running back to really do much. Both teams have effective defenses, at least at stopping the run. Where I see the difference here is the pass defense for Washington is atrocious compared to the pass defense from Buffalo. The quarterback play in Washington is bogus. It's non-existent. 
compared to quarterback play in Buffalo. Yes, Josh Allen has a lot of room to grow. A lot, okay? He's still a bottom half in the league quarterback. Um, but he's better than everything Washington has put at that position for a solid, what, three years? So, yeah. Um, No-brainer. Buffalo's going to win. It's just a matter of how much they're going to win by. So this spread of nine and a half points is reasonable. Um, Buffalo has not shown a tendency to want to run up the score. Um, they just want to get out with a W. And once they get a strong enough lead, they start grinding the clock down. Um, so I think Washington has a strong chance of beating the spread here. I would actually avoid betting this game, but um, if I had to, I would bet for Washington to cover the spread. Um, the fantasy football implications are largely all on Buffalo's side. Um, as long as they don't have inclement weather, which is definitely something that can happen in Buffalo, on the turn of a dime, uh, that place can turn into a snowy, windy mess. So, uh, John Brown is the most consistent wide receiver to start, oh man, that they've had in years. And you definitely need to still put him in there. He gets lots of targets very, very consistently. And uh, if anybody's going to break away and get into the end zone, it's him. But even when he doesn't score, he gets enough yardage and enough targets that especially in a PPR league, he's going to put up 10 to 12 points as a baseline. So uh, John Brown needs to be in your lineups. Um, he's a flex play at the absolute worst every single week. He will not disappoint you. Um, there's not going to be a such thing as like a five point or fewer game for this guy. Um, Terry McLaurin on the Washington side is the only viable fantasy option ever this entire season. But I think it's time to bench him because if Buffalo really wants to, they just have to staple Tredavious White to him and he will do literally nothing. Tredavious White is an overlooked gem in um, cornerbacks in this league. He just doesn't get the hype that some other guys do, but he's a top five talent at his position and he will shut the young man down. Um, yeah. So nobody from Washington gets started in this game. Start Buffalo's defense. Start John Brown. Start Josh Allen. Josh Allen will do enough with his legs to make his lesser passing play not matter. Um, as far as fantasy football goes, running quarterbacks are very, very much favored. Um, the way running yards are scored is far better for a quarterback than passing yards. And Josh Allen only functions well as a quarterback when you add his rushing statistics to his passing statistics, at least at this point in his career. So his numbers, overall yardage, overall touchdowns, will produce more points than a quarterback that produces those same yards and same touchdowns just through the air. That's why you start running quarterbacks. So Josh Allen, under normal circumstances, you wouldn't really think of him as a great quarterback, but in fantasy football circumstances, this guy's a top 10 this week against an inferior team. You need to have him in your lineup. That's what I have for this game. Hit up the Nerdy Sports Fan Weekly for our first round of power rankings.